Welcome back everyone and as promised we'll get you straight back out to Maurice Torres. Tell me about the first time you met Marv Dunphy. The very first time I met Marv Dunphy and had a conversation with him was uh, Junior Olympics which is an end of the year tournament uh, right before my, uh, my junior, senior year and um, he called me to his into this conference room, this giant conference room, and they had told us that they were gonna have a college coaches in a conference room and that they were gonna call players and that college coaches wanna talk to. But unbeknownst to me, I was lonely in this conference room with Marv Dunphy and Scott Wong, and I'd heard about Marv, I've heard he's pretty intimidating, he's a great coach, you know, he knows what he's talking about. First time I met him, I was blown away. Uh, one of the smartest men I've ever met. Also one of the most intimidating, but in a, in a good way. I mean, he knows. You, you can obviously tell he knows what he's talking about. He knows the volleyball game better than anyone I've ever met. And uh, the first time I met him, I, I said, wow, that's a coach I'd like to go play for. The restaurant dream. What's a restaurant dream? Well, I'm a business, ma business admin major here at uh, Pepperdine. And uh, one of my goals out in life is to open up my own restaurant. Uh, I got the idea from my brother-in-law, and it's uh, kind of like a sports bar and restaurant all mixed into one. And uh, it's been my dream ever since I decided to become a business major because I like food. Being an athlete, you know, I eat a lot of food, so I'm hoping to open up my own restaurant. Coming in this year, you had said you didn't want to play like a freshman. You wanted to be a starter. You wanted to be a fixture on the court. How did you approach that idea? Well, from day one, uh, my big thing was not to think that I had like a sense of entitlement. I, I came in thinking, you know, I didn't have a starting spot, that I was just a freshman and there was 10, 12, 15, 17 other guys who were just as good as me, or if not better, and are more experienced. So I came in thinking I had to battle for a spot to play because there were all these guys that were more experienced than I was. So I came in wanting, working my butt off to try to get a starting spot, uh, working out hard, practicing hard, trying to do film to fix what I was doing wrong and when I got the chance to play making sure I did everything I could. Earlier in the season you played USC here at home and I don't know whether that was kind of a turning point for you but you were voted co-MPSF player of the week that week. Yes. Tell us about that match. To be honest I was extremely nervous. Um, you know, big. Uh, I get nervous before every game. It's a little pre-game ritual that I get nervous. Casey had a great night setting, and really, I, I'm just the big goon, as we call it. I'm just the guy who tries to hit the ball as hard as he can. But it, it all came down to the team and how well we played as a team. I mean, we were ranked number 11 at that point. USC was ranked number one, and we were. We battled and we had nothing to lose and we kind of proved it on the court and uh, I felt like I helped because, you know, I was able to provide a sense of offense, you know, uh, I was able to contribute to my team and just play the best I possibly could and, and I feel like that's what I try to do every night. How do you turn it around? when something maybe doesn't go the way that you wanted it to go. The idea I was taught, a big, a big part of it was from Marv and my high school coach. And what it is is even though you may not be having the best night offensively, you can help the team out somewhere else, whether it be blocking, whether it be talking on the court, whether it be defensively. Um, you always can provide something to your team when on or off the court. Because off the court, those guys off the court are just as important as the guys on the court. Because they give us a sense of, you know, like uh, they support us even though they're not on the court with us. But on the court, you gotta, you gotta contribute some way. Like one night I may not be hitting as well. We may be going up against a really good blocking team. But the way I can kind of counteract that is by playing well defensively and trying to come dig as many balls as I can, uh, block as many balls, or just try to be communicate and try to be a leader verbally on the court.
Right after the break, a glimpse of what makes a wave, and you won't want to miss it.